What's up, everyone? It's Anna, also known as that Star Wars girl, and today I am back with part two of Painting Yoda. Now, in this, you're going to see me tackle some more details. When you're painting with oils, especially when you're trying to do something that is going to be realistic, it is going to take a long time. The minimum amount of time I spend on my paintings is 20 hours and usually it gets closer to 40 or 60 hours depending on how big it is and how much detail is the painting entails. So in The Empire Strikes Back, Yoda has a lot of wrinkles and it is going to be a lot of detail to add to him. So even though this is only part two, you're not going to see as much progress. Like, it's not going to be a completed painting in this one video. So that's why there's probably going to be a part three as well as a part four. And for those of you that enjoy this, you'll probably like that. Now, when it comes to really building up forms on characters like this, it's going to be a lot of rep repetition. So you're going to see me go over the same parts multiple times, and that's because you're trying to build the paint. Some people can just go right in and, you know, add a swap and it'll look perfect. Those people are incredibly gifted. I am not one of those people. It took me years and years to learn how to do this. So whenever people tell me, oh my gosh, you're so talented, I'm like, I'm actually not talented. This is a skill that I spent years acquiring and that was one of my biggest things with The Last Jedi and with The Force Awakens as well was that Rey didn't spend any time learning. She didn't spend any time you know learning these things from Luke the way when you watch Luke train with Yoda it's very clear that Yoda is making Mark Hamill work his freaking ass off to become a Jedi. Rey just swings a lightsaber around. We never saw Yoda train Luke with a lightsaber. The only time we see Luke with a lightsaber on Dagobah is when he goes into the cave to confront Darth Vader. Everything else, Yoda was training Luke with his mind. And maybe that has to do with the fact that Obi-Wan was the one that was having Luke train with the lightsaber. But we didn't get to see any of that. And the little bits that they showed in The Last Jedi, that wasn't really training. The closest thing we got was her sitting on the rock. And that wasn't anywhere near accurate to the amount of time it takes to become a Jedi to at least the skill level that she was supposed to be at in that movie. And especially since she defeated the villain in the first movie, in The Force Awakens, the only reason that I at first was able to accept that was because I thought there was going to be more. I thought that she was going to be related to someone, there's some reason why she was so talented, why she was so gifted, and I thought that in a way it was probably because she was either a Skywalker, a Solo, or a Kenobi even, and she was left on that planet at a young age, but because she was already at the age where a youngling would get trained, she probably had some preconceived knowledge, she probably had holograms on Jakku with her, and so that's why she had all of this information, and that's how she was able to be so powerful. So that's what my excuses were for her in The Force Awakens, and then of course all of that was shattered in the Last Jedi, and it just showed that she's a complete Mary Sue, and she did not learn. That would be the equivalent of somebody that, you know, there are some people that are insanely gifted and talented with art, and, you know, they can just pick up a paintbrush or pick up a pencil and then create the masterpiece, and those people are incredibly, incredibly rare. You will rarely ever meet those people, and for artists that you see that are very successful, it's because they had to go, they had to learn. Some are self-taught, but they're not... I have yet to meet an artist that say that they just learned how to do this overnight. Like I said, that's incredibly, incredibly rare, and those people, even though they had that gift from when they were born, there's always room for improvement. There's always room to get better with your art. For example, one of these days I'm going to show you guys a drawing that I did of Princess Leia and then I will show you guys the way I draw now and you are going to definitely see an improvement. The other one was absolutely atrocious. and. There's even artists like Liana He. So if you guys aren't familiar with Liana He, she was an artist at Nickelodeon for a long time, and now she does a lot of her own freelancing work. She's come out with a couple of books. She's obsessed with painting these little mermaids, and they're very, very cute. And her book series is called Mini Mermies. And in this, she just shows a compilation of paintings that she did and a little bit about her process. But it, in the back of every single one of her books, she has a picture from She's a Kid, and it says, you know, never stop drawing, never stop practicing. And that's something that any artist will tell you. That's something that 
anyone that has any, you know, aptitude in anything, they will tell you, you need to practice. You don't get good at these things overnight. If you watch movies like The Karate Kid, he didn't get good at that overnight. He had to train. And you see him training, not not even doing kung fu, but how just doing manual labor teaches him those reflex so that way when he is, uh, you know, the karate kid, it's because of real life experiences. And I think that's something that was sorely lacking in these movies, these new, you know, Disney Star Wars movies. Whereas when you watch the dynamic between Mark Hamill and, you know, Frank Oz and the, well, obviously Frank Oz was the voice, but when you watch Yoda, like, you believe that Yoda is a real character. You believe that this tiny little guy is, you know, the ultimate Jedi, the one that was able to survive everything, was able to survive, you know, against Darth Vader, against Darth Sidious, the Emperor. And he's been hiding on this planet waiting to, you know, train the next Jedi, the one that's going to be the savior of everyone, who is Luke Skywalker. And he's even prepared to train Leia if, you know, Luke fails. That's why when him and Obi-Wan have that little conversation when Luke leaves and Yoda's telling him, you can't, you know, that that's a big thing for Yoda. You can't abandon your training. I know that you're a good person. You want to go save your friends. But sometimes sacrifices have to be made and you need to train. That was Yoda's biggest thing. You need to train. And we didn't get to see that with Ray, And it was very, very disappointing. And so when they, you know, lash out at us because we bring up this argument and they say, you know what, she did. She tr she swung a lightsaber around without any instruction from Luke whatsoever. It's like, that. that's not training. We watched Luke go through absolute hell. He was being tortured by Yoda, basically. And we understand where that discipline comes from with Luke. And when Luke even questions Yoda, and he's like, this is impossible. The things you ask me are too much. And Yoda proves him wrong. Yoda shows that even though he is tiny, he's the one that's able to pull Luke's X-Wing out of the swamp. And Luke wasn't. Because, like Yoda said, size matters not. Yoda was the most powerful Jedi, and he was the one that was able to survive when no one else could because of his knowledge in the Force, because he had trained in the Force, and he had trained Jedi for hundreds and hundreds of years. And this is one of those key things when you're writing a character, a very good character, is you have to understand knowledge is power. Yoda didn't get to where he was without him studying, without him acquiring this knowledge. And if you know, he didn't, then he wouldn't have been the one that survived. And yes, you can always argue that there are some instances where characters get insanely lucky. Like, if Luke was not the son of Anakin Skywalker, there is no way he would have survived. Because Darth Vader was there. Darth Vader is the reason why Luke didn't die, because that is his son. Darth Vader wouldn't have sacrificed himself and killed the Emperor if it wasn't too protect his child because he loved his son even though it was a very you know strange relationship that was Anakin's whole goal is that he wanted to rule the Jedi with his family and even though Padme passed away he was trying from the moment he revealed that he was Luke's father spoiler alert by the way that he wants to overthrow the Emperor and rule the galaxy that has always been Anakin's goal he wants to rule the galaxy he wants to make things the way he wants them to be and the way that he sees as right and even when he told Padme that and she was just kind of like oh la de dee la de do and then he tells Luke the exact same thing in Empire and yes, those movies did come out first, so in a way they are, you know, kind of set it up for the prequels, but Anakin's goal has not changed. He still wants to rule the galaxy with his family, and he will do that at whatever the case is. And then when he sees the bravery that Luke faces, and that Luke is a Jedi, and he's not going to turn to the dark side, and he can't stand watching his son die... Like, that's very powerful stuff. That's why Darth Vader is such a great character. And that is why the Star Wars saga, the originals, had such a big impact on the world and had such a big imprint, imprint on so many people's lives and childhood. And that's why Star Wars is what it is today. Well, what it was before Disney bought it. And then to see them, you know, lashing out at fans and saying, you know, you're wrong. You need to let the past die. It's like, no, because the past taught us these amazing messages and I think one of the f failings in humans right now is that some people don't think that history is important but it is history is there so that way we can learn from our you know ancestors so we can learn from the mistakes of humanity and even 
when it comes to, you know, science fiction, or in a way, this is more of like fantasy fiction, that, or excuse me, <laughs> science fantasy, it's a space opera, but even this is teaching an important lesson, and Luke Skywalker taught me that staying true to yourself and being a good person is the way to, you know, you know, don't turn to the dark side, don't let evil take over, and you can always stay a good person, and good will always triumph over evil, and Luke Skywalker taught me that, and I mean, everyone has their own story, everyone has had, you know, their own horrible things happen to them in their life, but that was something that got me through the ones in mine, and Yoda was a big part of, you know, showing to Luke that, hey, size matters not. You can still be a Jedi. It doesn't matter who you are, what your background is, how big you are. As long as you're willing to put the time in, the patience, and learn, you can overcome any obstacle in the galaxy. So, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, that's okay, too. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Make sure you click that little bell. And, everyone, may the Force be with you, because we are really, really going to need it. Bye! Hey everyone, after being asked for months now, I finally got a P.O. box, so if you want to send me some mail, go ahead and send it to Anna, that Star Wars girl, or TSWG for short, at P.O. box number 28171, Santa Ana, California, 92799-8171. Thank you, have a great day, guys.